Hello Vehicles of Change viewers and welcome to an episode of Vehicles of Change during the Promundo Global Honorary Award Ceremony. We have here with us today Tamara Adrian, who is a congresswoman in Venezuela and really fights for equality and dignity for women. So Tamara, thank you so much for being here. I know you've traveled a long way from Venezuela to Washington DC, not only for the award ceremony, but for Vehicles of Change as well. Why don't you briefly introduce yourself and tell us in one sentence what your mission is in it. Okay, uh, well, actually, uh, I've been working uh, with uh, all the organ, as a, uh, I define myself as a politician, has been born by politicians in order to achieve higher uh, goals. In, uh, in a way, I think it is uh, that way because I um, work uh, for NGOs and as a lawyer for mm -hmm. most of my life and uh, a few years ago I decided to, to went into politics because I thought it was necessary to um, enter, uh, to, to, to get a, um, a, a way of, of um, uh, actually taking decisions uh, that uh, matter for people. So what I what I do is I'm a congresswoman in this moment in a very difficult environment. Venezuela it's a very difficult environment in this moment. And basically, the Congress has been annulled by by the the government in order to um, keep them in power, and uh, we are not able to legislate. Moreover, to we are not able to to really um, be a, a, a Congress body. In the, in the traditional sense of the, of the word, but uh, we are able instead to uh, accompany people uh, in their struggle and uh, be the, the voices of those who are not able to have a proper voice. So you're the voices of the underserved is what I hear. And uh, what voices are those in particular? And how do you take these voices and put them into, put them in front of Congress and shape them into policies? Well, I represent uh, not only women's uh, voices, but, all, but also LGBTI uh, people uh, voices. I've been working with, uh, I'm a trans woman mm -hmm. myself, so I was the, the fourth uh, trans woman elected ever in the world in a Congress. Wow. And, yeah, and uh, the first in Latin America. And there was a second one later in Uruguay and another one now in, in uh, Ecuador. But uh, basically I was the first and that's uh, gold in itself. And, um, in um, developing in particular and in developing countries, right? Where yeah, yeah, this yeah. narrative is not necessarily talked about a lot. So. Well, not even in the United States we have someone who has been able to, to, to be in this position. Mm -hmm. the, um, recently uh, we, we had uh, these um, uh, elections in which uh, trans people actually won the elections here, but it was at the local level. Right. Not to the national Not level. Not the national level yeah. itself. So national level, trailblazer, the first trans woman to really try to shift politics and then turn them into policies as well. What was one of the policies that you were able to shape so far that you were most proud of and you found that was most effective in your country? Okay, as I, as I told you before, I'm not proud in this moment of anything mm -hmm. because we have been annulled as a, as a legislative body and uh, what we have been trying to do is to accompany people uh, in, in their struggles, as I said before, and be their voices. and. Uh, uh, people are starving in my country, basically. People are starving. People, um, I, I, I received a, a, a text uh, just a few minutes ago. We haven't had, in my home, in a middle class neighborhood, we haven't had um, uh, a drop of, of water in five days. So, can you imagine that, that, that it's happened to everybody? Um, electricity. Um, or basic, uh, actual, all basic um, um, public services are ruined, are almost destroyed. Uh, they work irregularly, and uh, yeah, you have to be there. Yeah. Uh, particularly, women are uh, the most vulnerable population in this uh, situation. Um, 
in uh, Latin America and particularly Venezuela, you have this uh, situation in which most of the of the um, houses are um, uh, are had by women. Uh, more, than, women, uh, yeah. yes, more than sixty okay. percent of all all the 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 the, 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 the houses are, are held by women, and uh, um, in this uh, extremely uh, worrisome situation in which it is impossible to cover your basic expenses uh, with your what you earn as a wage uh, because uh, you will need 80 to, 8 to 90 minimum wage in order to cover basic needs. Are you hearing me? 80 yes, to 90 uh, times the minimum wage uh, in which uh, a, a, um, um, two pounds of meat uh, it's equivalent to one month of salary wow. of, of the minimum wage. It's, it, it, it's very difficult. Uh, the government is taking over uh, all the situation in their advantage by uh, managing hunger mm -hmm. and uh, they sell products at very subsidized pro uh, prices but you have to, to be in line forever hours and hours so you if you're a woman you cannot uh, work because you have to be in line but if you do not work you, you don't have enough to pay for those products it's a vicious cycle right and it's really funny because when i'm coming from a development perspective and being austrian myself i remember how austria looked like before the cold before um the iron curtain right fell it was the same thing i grew up close to the border of hungary and slovenia where people before the cold uh, the iron curtain fell had to have food stamps and more to stay, stay in line to get the right consumptions of meat to get the right consumptions of dairies and wheat to help them to prosper in their economy but also in their economic growth so with that being said one thing we always reiterate on vehicles of change is how can we marry entrepreneurship and international development together and we know the uh, extreme poverty baseline is based on a daily consumption of dollar and ninety a day. What I'm hearing from you, the minimum wage needs to be met eight or nine times more than a minimum wage, so people can actually. actually the minimum ahead. wage at the black market exchange rate is around two dollars a month. Two dollars a month. Wow. So I know, I know, Danielle, you are coming from the entrepreneurship perspective, and you have investigated a bit yeah. what women are doing. Why don't you tell us a little about that? So I have a question for you. It may not be one. I'm that person <laughs> that asks those questions. I was looking at um, entrepreneurship in Venezuela, and because of the current economy, there's been an uptick. There's there's a need to create your own opportunities and your own income. And um, I was curious, have you seen have you seen yeah. positive entrepreneurship happening? Yes, in a very limited way, because when you have this um, huge the, uh, well, we have of, uh, in this moment hyperinflation that is estimated by the World Bank to be this year around 18,000 times the, the um, uh, that means the percent that means that uh, anything costs. I mean, whatever you think it may cost, that thing may cost is today and uh, at this time, but one hour later it costs to, to double or, or I don't know how much more. Uh, so in, in this very difficult environment to, um, it's hard to say it, but most of people are managing to survive and what they are doing is being engaged in any kind of black market possible. Oh, so black market entrepreneurship. Another thing I was reading about is, um, you know, when you have a startup, I, I've been there, I've built companies, and you're always looking for tremendous talent, but you never have enough money to spend for top talent. And so in my research, I found that more and more startups are reaching out to developers and, and code engineers in Venezuela yes. because they're able to offer them a wage that is less here, but is so helpful there. Yes. And so yes. all of these Venezuelans are now getting pulled in to U.S. teams yes. um, in entrepreneurship. Is that something that you're seeing? Is that a positive? Yes, yes. It's a very hard yeah, it, it, it's that... happening. It's happening for those uh, who have not decided to leave. Okay. Uh, they are able, uh, I, I don't know, with, with uh, if you earn $100 a month, you you may be relatively able to cover all your expenses with only $100 a month. I mean, can you imagine that? No. 
Uh, no, you cannot imagine that because it's, it's unimaginable for everybody uh, abroad in Venezuela. Uh, but uh, uh, yes, uh, some companies are taking advantage of this situation and are hiring uh, very talented um, engineers or architects, etc. Uh, and um, they are paying them uh, enough to live there and uh, they are very grateful. So what I'm hearing though is entrepreneurship is one way out of poverty as well in Venezuela, correct? Would you it has you always been. I mean yeah, everywhere in um, uh, I've been pushing for the, 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 uh, any kind of uh, entrepreneurship uh, during the, the years because I think that that's the only way to go out of, of, of poverty. And and we used to have important important developments during the time but now they are not such sustainable because of, of the situation of the economy uh, you many many, uh, many companies are struggling and trying to, to keep them uh, their their uh, their people working for them and uh, they they manage to pay them um, some dollars uh, in order to get them satisfied uh, but uh, in order to do so they have to earn some dollars so they have to uh, it's very difficult it's very difficult i mean unimaginably difficult so what i'm hearing is there any questions from your end still danielle on entrepreneurship yeah well actually um i'm forever like you know the good side of the coin like what can we do so what can our viewers out there do to help whether they be entrepreneurs, whether they be global policymakers, maybe just citizens of the world that want to do something. Like, what is something that, what simple thing, how could they get started being a vehicle of change in Venezuela? Um, I think that uh, uh, Venezuela is still a country of opportunities. In spite of all the awful situation we are facing this moment, uh, I'm certain we will have a future once the dictatorship uh, and uh, that is why you see so many uh, people that are there, still there, keep their companies running um, at the lowest possible level sometimes, but keep them, uh, keep their, their employees uh, on, on the place, they pay the, 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 the wages uh, from their own pockets because they have this feeling that in one moment uh, when they will be able to recover, they will already be installed and able to uh, create rich synthesis and, and uh, to uh, engage new people in, in the new Venezuela. So uh, I'm very excited about this idea of, uh, because I always see the, the glass uh, half, half full, full <laughs> and I, I, I understand that you have to fill it. So what I'm hearing is patronize companies that are still based in Venezuela. Like that's one small thing we can do. Uh, is there anything else? Like just like we aren't in Venezuela. What what can we do? Is there a way to fund things? Is there a way to change things? Like what is something? There is a way uh, to contribute. Uh, one way is to be aware of what happening, what is happening down there. Uh, that we are fighting for democracy, that uh, there is a very fierce dictatorship that is affecting everybody, uh, that uh, there is no f such like uh, such sort of things like uh, free elections, uh, that they are using elections in order to perpetuate them in the power, uh, but uh, that uh, there there is a lot of people that decided to stay down there and, and fight for for the country in. Uh, uh, you have an incredible amount of uh, human resources in Venezuela uh, that's still in place. With the, they are highly trained uh, with uh, doctoral studies in many various uh, fields. So yes, this is a country uh, to to keep in mind, to keep in your hearts, and, and to try to contribute to it in various ways, including just uh, helping people who are running away from. So what I'm hearing, wow, powerful interview. Thank you very much, Vehicles of Change viewers. What I'm hearing is spare Venezuela in your, Venezuela in your heart. Try to help those organizations that help Venezuela and also the cause that you're supporting. And truly invest in that Venezuelan um, labor as well and help entrepreneurship and startups to get off the ground. Is there one sentence takeaway we would like to give our audience before we're closing off the 
Well, it is always possible to be worse, but it is always possible to win. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, fantastic. Thank you very much, Vehicles of Change Video. See you at the next episode.